things. Well, we're now joined uh, from the Greek capital by uh, Nick Skrekas, uh, an economist, uh, an economic analyst and international lawyer. Thank you for coming on the program today. So uh, protests once Thanks again rife all across Greece, a public sector strike underway. Uh, how much longer can this um, vicious circle of cuts and bailouts and protests go on? I'm not sure uh, the protests are always linked immediately to either the bailouts or the austerity. We've seen these 24-hour combined strikes between the private and public sector unions uh, happening about once every month. Now, usually they're a very good opportunity for people to let off some steam. Uh, in this particular case, we saw 20,000 people on the street. But if you recall, May last year, when the first memorandum was signed, it was about 60,000. Um, they obviously make some wonderful pictures and the cat and mouse games between the riot police and the protesters are all well and good. But let's just recall what was happening in London and how widespread those riots were and how very less tense these are. So are you suggesting, though, that the uh, number of people prote protesting against the government over the past several months has actually dwindled uh, and there's not actually that much anger and frustration against these uh, constant austerity measures? Well, there's an awful lot of anger and frustration and it's seething underneath the surface. But people do really understand that if they wish to be in the Eurozone, uh, if they don't want to take a dramatic step and unilaterally default, uh, that maybe suffering some of these things in lower forms, of course, and in lower numbers, may just well have to happen. And there's a lot of recognition here that we have lived beyond our means for quite a long time. And a lot of the prosperity that we saw for the last 20 years was actually fueled by debt. Now, there, there have been a lot of people, though, that are saying, certainly some analysts are saying, that we should just allow Greece to default. Uh, would that benefit, uh, benefit what's going on, the crisis in Greece at the moment, do you think? I think there's a lot of people out there that may have bets on uh, Greece defaulting. I think there's a lot of people out there that have a lot to gain if the euro collapses. But I think there's a lot of people on the other side of the fence. Uh, if Greece does unilaterally default, it would be a severe implosion for the country. And we're talking about 11 million real people. And that would be very ugly. Now, it's ramifications for the eurozone and for the European banking system as well as for the rest of the world's banking system, would be dire. We live in very interconnected times. The uh, financial infrastructure and global economy are also intertwined. So it's not just going to be the markets. It won't just be the banks. It will be real economies everywhere. And it won't just be Greece. Now, meanwhile, uh, Italy's credit score has been slashed by ratings giant Moody's. Uh, it, it's citing a lot of confidence in Eurozone governments. Uh, do you think, are there, are there other states to follow? Look, I think uh, lots of the rating agencies these days have lost the kind of credibility they used to have before the subprime crisis, and it's no secret they're being sued left, right and centre for some of the horrible mistakes they've made. They're usually late to the party, and they are in this case. We've known for months that uh, the absolute number of national debt that Italy has is $1.9 which is, you know, enormous compared to Greece's $360 billion. So all well and good that they finally recognised it. Will there be others to follow? Probably yes. But will that make uh, an awful and huge difference? Well, I think most professional investors are already well aware of things. It does strike normal retail investors and the average folks on the street uh, as something really noteworthy. I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Nick Skrakas, economic analyst and international lawyer. Many thanks. Thank you, Rory.